Classes and types of adjusting entries. Now recall there are two categories, deferred items and accrued items. And we're going to first look at the deferred items. On October 4th, Sierra Corporation paid $600 for one year fire insurance policy. Coverage began October 1st. Now this is for a whole year. Sierra recorded the payment by increasing or debiting in prepaid insurance and crediting cash. But at the end of October 31st, and our accounting period here is for a month, um, we have used up one month of it. So you can see down here we need an adjusting entry to reduce the prepaid insurance and to recognize the insurance expense. So that, ent that entry would be debit insurance, expense, always in debit and expense, and it's for one month, 50. So I recognize the expense and credit prepaid insurance, prepaid insurance, credit for 50. And when I post this to here, you see I now have, as of October 31st, a remaining value of the asset of 550. And I've recognized in the month of October an expense of insurance expense. So you see, we recognize the expense and we reduce the asset. Now, if it was prepaid rent, it would be exactly the same thing. It would be rent expense, debit, and credit prepaid rent. Another, so those two are very similar, prepaid insurance, prepaid rent. Another is supply. Suppose we purchase supplies costing $2,500 on October 5th. And we put them in the cupboard, and we debit the asset supplies, credit, cash, or accounts payable. This account at the end of October 31st still shows that we have a debit balance of $2,500. That is, the supplies are worth $2,500. But when we do an account, accounting of the inventory, we have only $1,000 left. So you see, obviously, we've used up $1,500, but that's not recorded in my records. So... Again, recognize the expense, debit supplies, expense, and we're going to debit that $1,500 and credit the asset supplies. So we recognize the expense and reduce the asset. And when we post that, then our supplies account shows that we have a thousand balance, which is exactly what we have left. And um, I have a supplies expense account, debit 1500 Now another type of deferred item is depreciation. Depreciation is the using up of our physical assets like bu building and equipment and trucks. And so as the time accounting period goes along, we are consuming these assets. And at the end of the accounting period, then, we must recognize that we've used up some of that asset. So here, assume that we're talking office equipment and that we depreciated $480 a year or $40 a month. Well, here again, we recognize the expense, depreciation expense. I could say office equipment. Debit 40, always debit the expenses. Now, I could credit the account called office equipment, put the credit right here. But instead, what we do is we set up what's called a contra asset account. That is another account that is opposite. It has a balance opposite the balance of an asset. So an asset account has a debit balance. This contra asset account will have a credit balance. And we call that accumulated depreciation. And in here, we're going to keep track of all the depreciation of this asset from the time we bought it to the time we discard it. And we set that up in a separate account here called accumulated depreciation. The reason we do that is if I debited here 40, like this, then this would be 4960 but I wouldn't know the, how old that asset is. By doing it this way, I show equipment as 5000 on my uh, 
balance sheet and show equipment at 5,000, less accumulated depreciation of 40, then I show 4,960. So the person who reads the financial statement can judge how old this piece of equipment is. That's why we use the contra asset account accumulated depreciation. Now the last of the deferred items is our friend unearned revenue. Now many students get this confused because they see the word revenue and they think they've earned it. It is a credit balance account but as revenue is but this is a liability account because I have accepted the customer's money I have a liability to provide the service. So we received 1200 on October 2nd for, for trips that are going to be completed December 31st. When we received the money, we debited cash and we credited unearned service revenue. And the trial balance at the end of October 31st shows that we still have unearned revenue of 1200 So we must make that adjustment. We have earned 400 of it, and so therefore we no longer have a liability of 1200 We have a liability of 800 and we must recognize revenue. So I reduce my liability, debit, unearned, service revenue, and I reduce that by 400 and I recognize revenue, remember? The accrual basis, we recognize revenue when we earn it, and we earned it. And therefore we make that adjustment. We now have increased our revenue and we've decreased our unearned service revenue. The last two adjusting entries are accrued items, accrued expenses and accrued revenues. Now these are fairly straightforward and they're best uh, demonstrated with an example. Sierra Corporation last paid its salaries October 26th. The next payment will not be until November 9th. Well our cutoff period recall is October 31st. So. Employees receive total salaries of 2000 for a five-day work week or 400 a day. Thus, by October 31st, they have worked three days. They haven't been paid, but they are owed $400 a day or $1,200. So you see, this is, has accumulated but not recorded. So I simply record it. Again, debit the expense, salaries expense. So I must increase the expenses by this 1200 for the month. And I owe the money, and so I call that salaries payable. And I credit that because it's a liability of 1200 And that's how I record accrued expenses. Recognize the expense, set up the payable. And the same would go for accrued revenue. I have earned the revenue over the period, but I have not billed for it. So therefore, in this case, what you would do is debit the receivable, debit accounts receivable, and credit the revenue. Now, after I have recorded in my general journal those adjusting entries and then posted them, to my general ledger. I then summarize the ledger again and present a trial balance. Now this trial balance is after I made the adjustment, so it's called the adjusted trial balance. And again, a trial balance is simply a listing of the accounts in any order and their debit or credit balances. So you can see now in red, these are the accounts that have been adjusted. I have an accounts receivable of 200 because I've earned that revenue and I recognize that the revenue has gone up. Recall I reduced my supplies by 1500 So I had advertising supplies expense 1500 and my asset advertising supplies has been reduced down to 1000 and so on. So you see depreciation expense here 40 and accumulated depreciation 40 and after I've uh, totaled all of these I make sure that my debits equal my credits. Now it's at this point that the accountant is ready to prepare the financial statements just like we did back in chapter one. And simply put you start off with the income statement 
Here are the income statement ones. Revenue minus all the expenses. Then you have the retained earnings, which was zero. You add the net income to that. And you subtract any dividends, and there was 500 dividends. Then you have the classified balance sheet. And you classify them as current assets, accounts receivable. Uh, cash, accounts receivable, advertising, and prepaid insurance are current assets. Office equipment, less accumulated depreciation, are long-term or property plant and equipment assets. Notes payable and accounts payable and interest payable and unearned service revenue and salaries payable are all current liabilities. In this case, there's no long-term liabilities. And finally, the shareholders' equity section, common stock plus the new retained earnings, and therefore, your total assets should equal your total liabilities and shareholders' equity. And that then almost completes the accounting cycle. What we have to do next is close the, the accountings.